Hi, having talked about how we can go from decimal into two's complement floating point in the previous video, let's go through a few more examples where perhaps you want to now pause and have a go at this yourself before checking the answers either in the description or just by continuing to watch. So bear in mind, there are a few ways to get to the answers here. I may do it a different way, so it's okay if you have a different method. And bear in mind, the third question here is a little bit trickier because we need to know a little bit about normalization. So that may be a bit harder, but have a go. Well, my first step is to go into fixed point, which 454 is not needed at all because 54 is not a decimal. Therefore, I can just convert this into binary as normal. I think people don't always realize that actually this does work still with normal numbers. So I say normal numbers with integer numbers like this. So don't get thrown if you see an integer instead of a decimal. So what I'm gonna do here is do seven bits. So my column home is gonna be one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, and 64. This 64 is gonna be a negative 64 because it's two's complement, not that it matters here. So this is gonna be a zero. Then we're gonna have what, a one here, remainder 22. This goes in once, remainder six, and the rest of it is hopefully relatively straightforward. So I haven't really done my table here, but the answer is, or I'm in Tissa at least, is gonna be zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero. And now, where is my binary point? Well, it's at the end here. Because I've got no decimals, I've got nothing after it, but it is still sitting here, even if we wouldn't normally write it out for an integer. So my next step is to go, how many times is this binary point gonna move into my standard position? Well, where is my standard position gonna be? It is going to be after my MSB which is just over here, okay? Now, if you know about normalization, you'll know this is okay. They're two different values, so we can just count how many times we're moving to here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's moving six times, a shift of six. So now we need to decide if this is gonna be a positive exponent or a negative exponent. Well, 54 is bigger than this number here, this fraction, so therefore it's gonna be a positive exponent and you can just learn a left movement of your binary point, it's gonna be positive. So here, our result is gonna be, um, in floating point, it's gonna be zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero. And then our exponent is gonna be six, which is gonna be zero, one, one, zero, in four bit, two's complement. This is often how you'd leave your answer, just with a gap, but you could also write in if you wanted to the binary point, and maybe you could raise this to um, after a base of two, but it doesn't matter so much. Okay, for question two, we've got minus 26.25. I'm gonna put into eight bit mantis and a four bit exponent. So a little bit harder here in that we've got a negative number. So our mantis is gonna be negative. Our exponent is gonna be positive. I can look at that already and know that, but um, let's first of all put this into fixed point notation. And I would be tempted here to put it into positive 26.25 and then flip it and add one just to save a tiny bit of maths, but it doesn't matter so much. In fact, let me just do it normally. So let's do eight bits. You have to, like I said in the previous video, guesstimate a little bit how big your how big your um, decimal part is going to be, how many bits you allocate to it. I reckon here we need two, because working backwards, it'll be 0 0.75, and we need our half and the quarter. So let's put that in first. Let's do our half over here and our quarter here. And then I've got one, two, four, 8, 16, is that enough? No, one more, 32, but it's a minus 32 because we are doing two's complement. Let's just do a quick table this time. Why not? Not a very good one. Now I need to do um, a one here because we're negative, we need to say that. So now what is our remainder left over here? Um, let's try and do it in my head here. It's gonna be what? That's only 5.75. And so this is gonna be actually quite easy. None of these go in apart from a four, remainder 1.75. The one goes in, remainder 0.75. And so after our binary point, which is sitting here, we've got half and a quarter like this. So if I just write this out so we can see it better, we've got one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, then our binary point, then one, one, like this. Now, we could have just, like I say, um, at the start, just done positive 26.25 and flipped it and add one. Might have been easier than doing this. But it's not too bad. My next step is to move our binary point into our standard position, which here is gonna be our normalized position just down here, which we're going, what, one, two, three, four, five. So moving five times. Again, it's a left movement of our binary point, so it's a positive number. We can look at that by going, okay, well, 
the magnitude of this, you know, the minus sign is bigger than one, so it's going to be positive. So our answer here is going to be one zero zero one zero one. And is that right? No, we've got missing those two ones. And then our exponent is going to be five, which is going to be zero one zero one in two's complement. And it's positive, hence why our MSB and our exponent is zero. So um, again, you could write out for binary point for one or two, but let's just leave it in this form. A bits and our mantis are four in our exponent, like it asked for. Okay, um, for the third part here, we've got a small negative number, which are the hardest to convert by hand. It's also hardest to think of examples for because the numbers do get quite tricky unless you are very careful here. So it's rare to get a difficult, a really difficult one of these. But it's tricky because we're going to have a negative mantis and a negative exponent. Um, so first of all, oh, we need to put this into fixed point notation, which is probably actually the hard bit here. So a few ways you could do it. I would be tempted just to go, okay, let's this time ignore the sign for now, do the positive version 0.4375, and then flip it and add one to go into two's complement. I think that's the best way here, just to save us doing some, some maths in our head. So let's ignore the whole number side of this for now and just have our binary point ready uh, down here. First of all, we've got half, and it's probably better to write it out now as a decimal so we can visualize it better. Half, then we've got 0 0.25, then 0 0.125, and then 0 0.0625, and hopefully we're not going to need more than this. Um, so first of all, let's just do a quick table. We're going to go, okay, how many times does 0 0.5 go into this number? Let's ignore the sign for now. It goes in zero times. But 0 0.25 goes into 0 0.4375. It goes in once. What is our remainder here? Uh, good question. Let's just do that very quickly over here. Um, and two five like this. So this is five, seven, three, eight, and one. So not point one eight seven five is our remainder. This goes in once, and our remainder here is going to be. I can do that one in my head. This one. It's going to thankfully be not point zero six two five. So this is going to go in once. Remainder zero after this point. So we don't need any more columns, thankfully. Now because the numbers here are quite awkward to deal with. Um, they're not going to usually give you many more columns. I think this is probably about the limit, these combinations. So that's okay this time. Um, right, so here I've got four bits and we're asking for eight bits. So I need to just really pad out four bits from somewhere. May as well do it in my positive direction. But here, this is the positive version of 0 0.4375. So I need to make sure I convert it to two's complement and the negative version. I'll do this by flipping the bits. I've got four ones here. We've got a one zero 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 here. I need to add one to this. Is the quick method to convert, and now we're just getting the one like that. Uh, so now my step is to like before, move my binary point into our standard position, which here is a little bit harder. That's why I said at the start of the video this is trickier because I mean before it was easy in the sense that we were just moving it to the start or the one after the start, but here if we did that it's not really going to, it's not really correct per se. So we could we could move it to the start, but actually where you should move it to is our normalized position, which we'll look at in the next video, but you might know this already, but we actually need to move it this way. And the clue should be that this is a small number, right? It's a small number, so we shouldn't be moving our binary point to the left. We moved it to the left before because we had bigger numbers in terms of magnitude. Here it's a small number, so we should be moving it to the right, not the left. So it should be going here. So our number should be, our mantis should be 1.001. And I need to pad it out to be eight bits by just adding four leading zeros on here. These do nothing, but we just fill up that space. And now my x one is gonna be one, but it's gonna be minus one because I'm now moving to the right. It needs to be minus one because our number is small. Okay, so minus one is gonna be one, 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 one in four bit two's complement. And so our number will be written out like this. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, with four ones as our exponent. A bit harder because we have to make some decisions ourselves about how we're going to do our fixed point step. And also the numbers are a little bit harder to deal with when it's fractions. And also because we have to normalize it, which is not hard, but it's something we haven't looked at yet. So we'll look at that in the next video.